if the tracheostomy care is really good if with adequate knowledge the outcome will be very good and there will not be much damage we put a patient on tracheostomy and it is our responsibility to wean off the patient of tracheostomy and uh, we make sure that the damage is very very minimal so this is what the whole tracheostomy care is about so let's go into the main aspect of our session okay so as i uh, told i am repeating what are the normal physiology okay so what alterations do we do when we put in a tracheostomy tube we are bypassing the normal gas humidification process which is the nose okay so when patient breathes through the nose uh, the air is adequately warmed uh, humidified and patient gets very um, humidified processed air which doesn't happen when we put in a hole uh, a put in a tube through a hole in a trachea so we are bypassing the normal gas humidification okay and the mucociliary clearance is also altered because the tube is sitting there and it is uh, hindering the movement of mucus which is we, which we know this there is a, a ciliary movement from uh, the airway inside to distal to proximal and the mucociliary clearance happens in the same process okay but being um, uh, uh, I hindrance uh, to the movement of mucus the tube is obstructing the usual clearance so epithelial changes are also happening due to dry inspired air so there is dry air there is no proper uh, warmth uh, it is not humidified so it is causing irritation the mucus clearance is not good and the patient cannot be talking that is one big thing which can really psychologically traumatize the patient okay and there can be a lot of uh, because there is no movement from a distal to proximal same way the swallowing is also impaired and the patient is not used to the tube and there can be a lot of pooling of secretions in the oropharyngeal uh, place uh, above the cuff okay we have the cuff inflated the secretion is not going in but uh, the cuff has uh, uh, making a uh, cuff has a lot of uh, um, uh, irritations or it it hinders the secretions from up to down also post operative care what do we do in a tracheostomy patient what are the salient features or the main uh, care aspects we do consider in a tracheostomy patient so uh, tube position we need to make sure the tube is properly positioned the cuff needs to be managed properly we will go through each aspect of this there is uh, there should be humidification because these are actually done by uh, the nose and the airways which we are bypassing so it is our responsibility to make sure the tracheostomy is as physiological as possible to cause less damage adequate suction management is important and inner cannula inner cannula takes care of the patent airway so when the inner cannula is taken good care there will be less chances of sudden blocking and emergencies and life threatening situations and there are situations in which we need to change the tracheostomy tube so we will go into each aspects of this tracheostomy tube position how do we uh, make sure that position is uh, optimal so we uh, very carefully under bronchoscopic guidance we do place uh, the tracheostomy uh, uh, tube when we do the needle technique needle wire technique and in surgical uh, it is uh, it is a open technique so it is very obvious we are going through the midline okay so the tube needs to be kept in um, position secured very well so with sutures when we do the tracheostomy on the immediate po post op period it needs to be secured very carefully with sutures okay so uh, and we meet um, it should be like in the midline it shouldn't be hitting the walls so we need to make sure that uh, each um, uh, in the tube is midline and the flange is equally on both sides of the trachea so that that is not pulling of uh, tracheostomy tube to one side okay so apt sutures then it can also be uh, secured by cotton tapes with a double knot if it is less than one week we have to be very very careful because the tract will not be formed it is still fresh and fragile once the tracheostomy tube is out within seven uh, days there is a, a chance of redoing uh, the tracheostomy we cannot directly put in the tracheostomy uh, uh, tube again because the tract will not be formed yet so it will take at least a week to 10 days for the tracheostomy tract to be formed so till then if the tracheostomy get dislodged we need to reintubate and redo the tracheostomy again okay so uh, for this reason we need to make sure that we don't change uh, the tapes even after 24 hours of tracheostomy we must unless it is soiled or things and sutures needs to be holding the tracheostomy tube in place till 7 to 10 days so that the tracheostomy um, uh, tract is well formed 
okay so these are the things uh, which we use one is the suture then cotton tapes then there are tapes which has velcro okay so it is uh, the velcro is passed through the flange opening in the flange and it is like snugly fit around the neck and sometimes when we in neuro patients when we don't use the tracheal uh, strap around the neck it can be even uh, plastered to the shoulders so it's like this so uh, here we can see that uh, we have a tracheal uh, band going around the neck here we have fixed it over the shoulders so that there is less pressure around the neck okay so uh, this is how it is fixed and it is very clearly the stoma is dressed and it is not uh, pulling out or in so it is like in a very fit position and we can see that the patient will also be comfortable when adequate uh, proper positioning and fixing is done okay so that is it then we go to the different uh, so when do we change the tapes we have fixed the tapes okay so at least for 24 hours we don't uh, remove the tapes or hinder with it sutures are there to help us uh, hold the tracheostomy tube in position but when the tubes uh, when the tapes are uh, soiled or wet uh, if there is excessive movement if they, they are not holding very well they need to be redone or it, if it is very tight we need to just pass to uh, one or two digits uh, uh, fingers between the tape and the skin if it is too tight if we cannot do that then we need to change the tapes may it be the tapes uh, it, it might be some edema around the neck which is causing this tightness also so we need to recheck what's happening okay so then is the cuff management we all saw in the parts of uh, the trachea uh, tracheostomy tube the cuff is a very important aspect so what happens we have already gone through the low pressure uh, high volume and the high volume low pressure and the low uh, pressure and um, why the tracheal necrosis happens and how much pressure needs to be there so the cuff manometer is used uh, for checking the pressure as we do in the et tube the cuff manometer should be uh, just uh, used for checking the pressure optimum pressure is 20 to 30 we can see there is a green line or a um, um, uh, range which shows uh, adequate uh, pressure so optimum pressure needs to be checked again and again if uh, we need to uh, deflate or inflate we need to make sure the pressure range is between 20 to 30 this should be need uh, this should be done every every uh, eight hours we need to keep checking it there can be leaks there can be uh, leaks which is causing uh, how do we find out leaks is there will be audible sounds coming through the mouth which shouldn't be happening because we have bypassed the trachea uh, bypassed the airway so there will be loss of tidal volume we cannot be ventilating very well and the patients due to irritation if the cuff is not uh, snugly fitting into the trachea the tubes might be irritating the patient's trachea causing the patients to cough more so every time there is some issue and there is a lot of leak of air or if we hear any sounds we need to check the cuff between the eaters okay or and at least uh, every time when the uh, suctioning or other uh, tracheostomy care is done we need to uh, check the cuff pressure okay so a prolonged cuff pressure causes necrosis okay if uh, the cuff is over inflated there is going to be tracheal mucosal ischemia due to constant pressure over the mucosa which is very uh, tender it needs to be taken care of there can be even ulceration and erosions erosions can happen because the adjoining structures it, the tracheal mucosal erosion can be so much that there can be uh, pressure over the trachea uh, pressure over the esophagus causing a, a tracheal esophageal fistula it can erode the arteries around innominate artery causing a very big bleed that is a life-threatening situation and uh, after uh, like when the uh, tracheostomy is even de uh, decannulated the patient can have laryngotracheal stenosis which is really bad and these all require surgery and there can be difficulty in swallowing that we can leave the patient handicapped uh, with a, a loss of or a difficulty in swallowing for a long time if we do not manage the tracheal cuff pressure properly okay so under inflated cuff what happens okay over inflated causes a lot of necrosis but under uh, inflated cuff also causes a lot of uh, irritation the patient coughs very badly the, that can be aspiration of secretions more incidence of pneumonia so we need to make sure this is why we check the cuff pressures very often at least every eight hours and in between when we do a um, thorough check of the tracheostomy uh, tube every shift every staff every doctor needs to be checking on the cuff and the position of the tracheostomy tube 
of course, the patency. So next is the humidification. So what are we doing uh, with the humidification part? It is very, very important. There can be crusting and tracheitis. Patient will be having a lot of secretion due to constant tracheal irritation. Trachea will be getting irritated if there is dry air passing in and out. So there can be a lot of crusting, which might cause block of the tracheostomy tube. And um, the patient will have really a very um, uh, not so comfortable uh, course in the hospital. So we must make sure that there uh, must be humidification. Humidification, there are two types. It can be active or passive. Okay, it depends on the um, patient individual variability. So what is passive humidification? There is uh, something called the heat moisture exchangers, which we call the HMV filter, which has a filter, bacteria or a viral filter, and there can be air passing through this. This is passive because it uh, just takes care of uh, humidification and heat from the patient. It absorbs uh, heat and humidif moisture from the patient and uh, it, uh, moistures, uh, it moistens the next inspiratory air coming inside. So it is a passive humidification technique. This can be used in patients who don't have a lot of uh, secretions. Uh, if they are not having, if they are not requiring too much uh, uh, suction, if they are not having too much secretions, uh, if they are having too much secretion, then that HME might not be useful because it might get blocked and uh, uh, clogging might cause uh, other issue uh, like desaturation and patient discomfort. Sometimes the patient even feel uh, very uh, suffocated with uh, blocked heat moisture exchange. So uh, the patient, if the patient has very stable respiratory function, he is off ventilator, he is not requiring any positive pressure ventilation for some time. Uh, the secretions are not so much. Uh, if the oxygen requirement is also not very much, then the patients can be put on uh, passive humidification, which is the HME filter. So it can it uh, it has a suction port. We need to know about the parts. There is an oxygen port in which we can be connecting uh, to oxygen tubing and oxygen source. So there is a tracheostomy opening. One fix uh, to the patient side, another is open, and there is a uh, suction port which can be opened and closed. There are a lo lot of types of companies, but this is a basic uh, model and parts. So uh, next is the active humidification. How do we actively humi uh, humidify the air? This is a humidifier. This is a heated humidifier. Okay, so the air passes, inspiratory air passes through this uh, channel where there is water, sterile water, which is and this is a heating element which warms the water and warms the air. So when the air passes through this uh, chamber, which has this heated circuit and this heated uh, uh, warm air, it takes away heat and moisture and it goes to the patient. Okay. So when the patient has high oxygen requirement, if the if uh, there are a lot of secretions, we need to manage the secretion. Airways are very irritable already. Patient is having a, um, irritable airway causing wheezing. If there are uh, a lot of oozing in a coagulopathic patient where HME filters uh, cannot be used because we cannot be frequently changing due to a clogging of HME filters. This will help in healing the airways a little bit early. It is just like a steam inhalation. So patient will not have the crusting. Uh, and the secretion might even come low because of the less irritation. So that is uh, passive humidification and active humidification. This is how it looks. So here the HME filter is placed and the patient's uh, tracheostomy, uh, is, uh, tracheostomy tube is secured by tapes. Here also the same, but there is a circuit which, uh, from which uh, uh, the active humidification takes place.